Tony, a memorable day for David Sound Court and Cody here in Chadwick's Wexford Park. First of all, you must be very pleased with how things planned out this evening. Absolutely, Peter. If Glyn Barrentown were playing anyone else, obviously I'd want them to win, but there's no divided loyalty. Today is Davis Sound. I'm thinking of people like Jimmy Nolan, uh, you know, his son Paul. I'm thinking of Johnny Delaney, uh, John, his father, Larry Delaney. Unfortunately, Peter, I'm at an age now where I'm thinking about granddads. So I'm a grand uncle to number seven to young Jack O'Regan. And I have to say I'm very proud of him, like for the family. But the last day was incredible. The Davistown crowd applauded their team off the field. And at the end of the day, Davistown was a small community, you know. And uh, to, to uh, manage to beat Glen Barrentown, who were also a magnificent club and a magnificent team, to beat them in county final replay, Peter, I think is something special. You know, so I'm delighted for them. Uh, I think if anyone has any doubts as to what the GEA means, and you look out on Mexford pitch today, the match is over for the last, whatever, 15 minutes or so. Nobody wants to leave. Nobody from Davidson wants to leave. It's a link with the future. It's a link with the past. And I also want to congratulate as well the county board and Michal Martin, the chairman, for what they have done. I mean, it was a wonderful occasion the boat, uh, Glen Barrington uh, school boys and girls and Davis Sound giving a guard of honour. That's important. That's really important. Uh, you know, so all in all, Peter, it's one of the happiest GEA days of my life. My brother, I think the last time he saw Davis Town play, he came, uh, was back in 1962. So he's up from Cork today. Never expected to see a Davis Town victory because uh, I suppose we're a kind of pessimist by nature. But um, some, uh, some tremendous players. And to be honest, Peter, I thought the hurling was fantastic. Both sides. I mean, Glenn Barrington gave it everything they had. Davidson fought the whole way, tooth and nail. And probably, in my mind, I think, David Dunn's point, the clinching point, because he was inspirational the last day. He was very tightly marked with, on one occasion, five players. But that last point, you know, that was... Iconic, I think, is the word I might choose. And I think it'd be fair to say, Tony, that on the playing field, things have been up and down a little bit in the grades for Davidson over the last few years. But it seems that there's a young team there now, plenty of good young talent, and are now up in the intermediate A grade and maybe potential to go even higher. Absolutely. And I think, Peter, if you were to talk about hurling generally, in my childhood, the difference was, I think, that every small club like Davidson, Money Gear, you name them, Bally Hogue, they had players who were very, very close or capable of being on the county team. Again, Jimmy Nolan, for example, from Davidstown, you know, from Oilgate, you had a, or, uh, Oilgate, you had a Nolans. Oilgate was a small club that time. Didn't have a minor team. They played with Davidstown one year. You know, if you go to Ballyhog, you had Jim Ring and you had the Foley brothers. And So it's awfully important that we build on some of the young talent from the smaller clubs. I think that's that's where the future of hurling has to be. Well, maybe over the next uh, few weeks, Dara Egan will be looking at a few of the Davidstown men and men from uh, other clubs around. But for today, it's a very memorable day for Davidstown, Court Cody. Memorable day, and I see big Andrew Shore over there. Uh, again, tremendous player. Last day, kept, kept Davidstown's hopes alive. Two huge frees, kept them there. But uh, Wally Furling had a great game today, like they all had, you know, and it's Davidstown's day. It's the players' day, but I suppose the big thing, Peter, about the GA is we live in the resplendent glory of our heroes. And today, those Davistown lads are heroes.